Only the Board B Equality Mark ensures you know where your food comes from because it's independently checked at every stage. This series is all about cooking good food fast and as a chef I'm always interested in finding out how other people cook. So far I've visited a couple of places where the chef prepares food for large numbers of people but today's programme is a bit different. I'm going to be cooking with Anya Lawler. I first met Anya when I had the pleasure of cooking in her house for a charity event and I could tell straight away that she had a love and a passion for food. I look forward to cooking with her later on in the show. But first, I'm going to be cooking some dishes here in Black Lion, and there's some real family favourites on the menu. Traditionally, when we serve steak in Ireland, we would serve with a rich sauce. For example, steak Diane, which is Worcester sauce, brandy and cream. Peppered sauce, which has some whiskey, and also some peppercorns and cream. So they're quite rich and heavy. This one is very different, and it's a dressing called chimichurri, which is a South American dressing, quite spicy, and it works well with a lot of grilled meats. And in Argentina and South America, they would serve it with steak. So what I'm going to do is make the dressing first of all. I'm going to prepare my chili. We're going to remove the seeds, top and tail, and I'm going to blend it in this little kind of chopper here. Just split it down, and then just simply scrape out the seeds. So you can do this with a teaspoon. Makes it kind of easier, and always do this away from you. So that's the full red chilli I'm going to use in this dressing. So just chop it roughly, just three or four, and that goes in there. Now, garlic, lots of garlic in this. So I'm using four cloves of garlic in here, which are already peeled. No need to crush them. And then with the spring onion, top and tail, and I'm going to chop this. So it's a very, very quick dressing. Works really well with grilled steak, but also with chicken, pork, and even lamb it would work well. Now our spices. So we're using hot paprika, just a large pinch of that, some cumin and then we're using some dried oregano. Red wine vinegar gives a lovely acidity to it, so about four tablespoons of that. Some water, just a touch of water. I may need to add more, depending on the consistency that I want. And then a little bit of parsley here. Stalks and all, it's the flat leaf parsley, or you can use the curly parsley if you want to. Salt and black pepper. Lots of the black pepper in here. The lid goes on. And then hand over that in case it skites and blend this. All you're doing is just making up the dressing. So after about a minute, you have a lovely light dressing. Now what I can really smell is the vinegar and of course the cumin. Now this will keep in an airtight container in your fridge for up to a week. Next thing we're going to do is cook the ribeye. So a nice hot pan. Ribeye is one of my favourite cuts. Lovely marble in the fat, that's the most important thing. This is quality assured Irish beef. Grass fed for succulence and flavour. It's just hard to beat this cut. When you think of it 10, 15 years ago, this was seen as a lesser used cut, a cheap cut. Not anymore. It's a, it's a prime cut and it's um, highly prized in restaurants. Salt, black pepper, bring it to room temperature. So the way I've cooked steak has never ever changed. It's the same way I'm going to show you now, but the different dressings and sauces has changed. And this is quite an interesting one for you to try at home and experiment. So you season one side of the steak, really good hot pan. Griddle pan is a great investment to have in your kitchen because it looks really well for presentation. So we put it seasoned and oil side down. You'll hear the sizzle. And then you season up the other side. A little bit of oil too. And I'm going to cook this nice and pink. Medium, medium rare for this. I have it on a full heat at the moment, but I will reduce it down. Red cabbage. My mother used to cook the most fabulous red cabbage, and she'd braise it with apple juice, red wine, lots of spices, you know, and it was really, really tasty. A winter dish. This is lovely and fresh. It's like a salad. All I need for this is just quarter of the red cabbage. Remove the white core. And then we're using this Japanese mandolin. So just using the safety guard, slice the red cabbage nice and thin. Keep your hand nice and flat when you're doing this. So what I'm looking for... It's that it's all kind of nice and thin. It's the same thickness. So red cabbage goes in to your bowl. Get some red onion. And we're going to slice this so we are. Hold your hand nice and flat. Isn't that gorgeous? Now what you could do with this, for red onion, something like this, is uh, dry it out in an oven and it crisps up and it's a lovely garnish for on top of a steak. 
I'm going to grate the apple and the beetroot, but first I want to turn the steak. So really, really hot pan. And it's like cooking in a barbecue, you have those lovely lines, shard effect. So still keep it up nice and high. This should be done maybe five, six, seven minutes. And it really depends on the thickness of the steak and the heat of your griddle pan. Okay, the easiest way to do this is just using the coarse end of the grater that you'd use for cheese. Using some beetroot. And this is some beetroot from our own garden. It's nothing nicer than be able to pick in the side and work your menu around what you're growing. Now, the apple. Um, I'm just going to grate the outside of it, skin and all. Lots of flavour there. And of course, apple and beetroot is a classic combination. So about half the apple I'm using in this. Okay, knock everything out. Wash your hands. And then we're going to get our flavourings in here. Red wine vinegar, which I use in the dressing. So a good splash of the red wine vinegar. Extra virgin olive oil in this. Plenty of this. For sweetness, we're going to use some brown sugar. And this is light brown sugar, some currants. When we used to braise red cabbage, we'd always put sultanas, raisins, that kind of thing, but currants work really well in this. And then one of my favorite nuts is pecan nuts. They're lovely soft nut. So they're just toasted, just in the pan. Salt and pepper. Just with a spoon, you combine everything. So the vinegar and also the extra virgin olive oil will be the dressing, and it will glaze the cabbage. Spoon this up nice and high. So you serve this on the side. And then we're chimichurri dressing over to the side. I'm gonna slice my steak. Before I do that, I want to just test it. Now that's nice and soft. So I'm really happy with that. So that's what you call to sear a piece of steak. Really, really hot pan. Beautiful and golden brown. Slice this up. It's not too rare, which is perfect. Pink in the center. And it just is like butter. You know, when you got good steak, you don't need to mess around with it, marinate in it. It should really speak for itself. So for this dish, what I would do is just simply onto some parchment paper. Yum, the smell is fantastic. The next time you cook steak at home, instead of serving it with a cream-based sauce, why not try this interesting sauce, the chimichurri, with a healthy salad. to be in your kitchen and to cook with you again. Last time we cooked together, we had a lot of fun. Yes. Thank you for being at home, Chef. Oh, thank you so much. No, it's a pleasure, Nevin, really. What I'm really impressed with, your passion for food, but also growing. And look at this beautiful box of everything you've grown here. Here we have what you can get at this time of the year. This is lovely Russian kale. This lovely purpley color it goes this. when it gets frosty. Isn't it gorgeous? And it's really tender. Even people who don't like greens, I, you could eat that raw. Exactly. It's a it's gorgeous, so gorgeous green leaf. And this, again, it's another kind of cane. Now, there's a little bit of frost damage, but that's a lovely dark green leaf. And you cut out the ribs, and it's full of vitamins. It's the latest superfood. what you call food. a Tuscan kale. What well, I yes, am known as yeah. a Tuscan kale. And then your, your leeks. Well, these are the mainstay. They've been going all winter long, and I'd say beginning of April, we'll go on having leeks. They're just brilliant, and they work in so many dishes. And where is your allotment? It's up near Enniskerry. Um, we rent the land from a farmer. He provides the manure and the water, and it's just... We only go up about once or twice a week, uh, but we're able to feed the family most of the year round. We have greens like this now. Um, I'd still have a few things left in the freezer from last summer, from it's all the nice brilliant. summery things, yeah. And even going up once a week, like we can get these, I bring them home, wash them, blanch them, stick them in the freezer, and then they're there for rushing That's in from work any day of the week. Tip. People, if they only knew they can freeze things and keep yeah. them and then make a soup or whatever like that. So what are you going to cook for me today? Well, again, something really simple, but it's a great dinner for if you're coming in from work. It's using seasonal vegetables and it can be done in pretty much half an hour, even shorter. I don't even know if it has a name, but basically it's going to be the bacon in oil with the leeks. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to steam the greens and we've a little bit of purple sprouting this. broccoli. Look at that. And we're going to cook the pasta and then we're going to mix it all up with cream and parmesan. Sounds good. And then we're going to eat it. Would this be a dish you cook for your family? This I would do quite a lot. And again, it's a great dish for getting greens into people. You could do it without the pancetta if you're a vegetarian. Beef it up more with different kinds of meats in it if you Chicken, wanted to. Whatever yeah. Go, yeah. Even kids who don't eat greens would yeah. eat this dish. Fantastic. Yeah. Right, what do wives do? I'm here to you help you. You start chopping okay. there. Okay, chop big, small, does it matter? Uh, I like them chopped quite finely. Quite finely, and okay. And then we'll chop, I'll start chopping the kales here as well. Do you know leeks? 
are sometimes very underused. I probably robbed your big knife. No, no, no. I'm well, so I'm, used to, to big knives. I was just worried that you wouldn't find the knives sharp enough because <laughs> you perfect. like sharp knives. So that's the Russian kale you're preparing now. That's right. How yes. is that dice for you on you there? That's is that okay? perfect, yeah. Are you sure? You'll That's keep the on, will you? nice and small. And again, with kids, I've gotten into the habit of keeping... Sometimes they prefer the vegetables if they're chopped up small. That's true. And how many kids do you have, if you don't mind me asking? Four. Yeah, and four only kids. two at home at the moment, ah, so... fantastic. And, and how old are they? Um, oh, from 25 down to wow. 14. And yeah. you have twins like me? Yes. Although one of them's away at the moment. Oh, and are they very close? Um, they're like... I don't know how you find a boy and a girl twin. They're like an old married couple. You know, they're That's close and they're not close like identical twins, yeah. but they're close in ways that other people will never understand. That's true, because you know? I'm a twin myself and there is a definite bond there. Yeah. And as we've got older, we've got closer, which is interesting. Oh, good. You know? yeah. yeah. So you're doing the two types of kale now. Yes. Other thing about kale is you'll think it's enormous, but it does shrink down. True. When it's cooked, for that amount of pasta, I'd say this is about the right amount of kale. And now, of course, kale is so fashionable now. And it's gas, isn't it? You see it in juices now, and a lot of chefs are using it in the restaurant. Well, garlic, you want me to, going to grate that? I'm going to grate that okay. in, because I love garlic. I'm going to grate it in kind of after the bacon has been fried. So as I get really Good. punch up the garlic. So, Nevin, I'm going to start by taking the bacon, just some nice smoked pancetta we have here. Lovely. And that's going into the oil, just to fry off in a nice gentle heat there while the pasta and the kale cook. Put in the pasta, salt in the water already and it's all boiling away. And if I give you the colander, can yeah, you pop the kale Sarah. in there yeah, for me? Yeah, no problem. So you've washed the kale already. Yes, and yeah. I've removed the green stalks that. from the I middle, so it's that. nice and gentle. That's very interesting. There it's the way my mammy taught me. <laughs> was your mum a good cook on you? She was a very good home cook and so was my grandmother. Yes. Yeah. So we kind of grew up with that tradition of good things food. being grown. Yeah. I'll pop the leeks in now as well, okay. I think. Will you pop yeah, them in the bowl? No problem. We'll... Thank you. Yeah. And Anya, do you get time to cook a lot at home? I know you're so busy. It must be real kind of like a work kind of balance, you know. Oh, look, I am busy, but you yeah. know, the first thing I think about when I wake up, actually, my first nice thought after all the things I have to do is what do we have for yeah. dinner? Yeah. I just love dinner. I really love dinner and I love it. nice food. That bacon there, Nevin, is now starting to, the fat is starting to melt into the oil, which is nice. Lovely. Add in those chopped leeks. And again, it looks like there's loads and loads of leeks there, but they'll reduce down. Oh, yeah, what I've noticed you've done very clever is you put the lid onto the steamer so it's cooking and, and wilting. Look at that. Well, also, it's wilting down incredibly fast, but also the flavour, all those green juices. And, you know, you buy green pasta, you buy spinach favourite pasta. So it's this true. is... Uh, and it saves on washing up. That's the main thing. <laughs> so right now, again, very hard this. You grate those. Very hard, OK. And I have a little bit here of lovely purple sprouting Love broccoli, that. again, that comes in this time of year. Matches your jumper, Nevin, <laughs> look. See, it's really cute. Oh, you see. Uh, so I'm just going to chop those up. So tender in flavour. It's one of my favourite vegetables. Do you have a favourite vegetable, actually, on you? I like them all. It, like, this time of year, I love the broccoli and mm -hmm. I love the kale. But I'm already starting to dream of broad beans. The little ones are sprouting and ah, I have the potatoes chitting. So I'm going to pop the broccoli in here now. It just adds a nice little bit of crunch and bite. I'm just going to check this pasta now. I think that's ready, Nevin. Hang on, yeah, you have a check for me. Oh, yeah, you know what to do in Italy. They throw it against the wall. I won't do it in your kitchen. <laughs> but when it, when it sticks, then it's cooked. Perfect. OK, mm. that's grand. A little bit of a bite and nicely seasoned. If you put the kale in with the leeks and then I'll drain the pasta in that colour no that problem. you've got there. I okay. love the smell of the bacon and the leeks. Well, it's a very Irish combination. With an Italian twist. Yeah. I'm going to put in cream now on you. Is that Perfect. OK? Perfect, yeah. Looks great. OK, and then in goes the wow. pasta. Like, I'd make a big dish of pasta yeah. if it's not all eaten. It's great for the lunch the next day. Of course. That no. looks nice. So actually, colourful. It? it looks amazing. And I'm just going to throw in the garlic now, right at the very end, for a wow. real whack of flavour. You I'll mix that, that in. I will. I use the parmesan here. I'll add more later. But here I'm using it just to thicken up the sauce. Beautiful. And make the greens and the cream and the pasta all stick together. Yeah. But it couldn't be quicker or yeah. simpler. It's true. And that's basically it. So I've just had this dish warming. I'll create a little bit more parmesan for you. It's a real yeah. kind of family serving, isn't it? Yes. Let and what I do is I put a bit of parmesan uh, over the top and then some of them eat more, some of them eat less. Yeah. So just put the parmesan out on the table Gorgeous. with the grater and Gorgeous. they can help themselves. I will okay. just, actually, yeah. if you yeah. put that in yeah. because I normally make a huge mess of this no, now. It's perfect. That's enough it's in so that perfect. bowl and I leave sure? the rest in the saucepan now. That'll do for the lunches tomorrow. Okay. 
I love it. See, I'm being thrifty, Nevin. You are, and I'll tell you. So, more parmesan. Per buddy. Perfect. Doesn't that look nice? It does look beautiful. Now, and a couple of serving spoons. So, when you, what would you serve with this? I might do um, a starter of some cold meats, or I might do a pudding. Again, an easy one would be just ice cream with fresh oranges squeezed over it. Nice, nice. Or a steamed pudding. Again, if I had the time, that would beautiful. be a lovely thing to do. Can I taste it? Oh, please do. I want to get a little bit of the kale. I'm and very nervous pudding. feeding you now, Nevin. No. Mm. I love it. Really? Mm. The garlic. <laughs> so fresh and the kale oh, the kale isn't strong it's absolutely delicious thank you so much for being in home chef i wish you good oh. health and happiness thank you so much on you lovely to see you again thank you for coming back to my kitchen it's always a pleasure and i want to go to yours you're now. welcome anytime the board be a quality mark ensuring your food is produced to the highest standards. Look for the Board Be A Quality Mark, because it looks after you. I like cooking chicken thighs because they're always so tasty, really succulent, and they're great value. So give them a try, this recipe here, instead of using chicken breasts. Ask for them, boned out, but skin on, and that's the secret. This is some quality assured Irish chicken. We're gonna cook this really lovely and slow, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the skin so crispy. Is there anything nicer than the skin of chicken when it's lovely and crispy? Lots of oil goes in there. We're gonna season with a little bit of salt and some black pepper. So we're going to cook them for about maybe, say about 15 minutes, skin side down, and then we'll flip them over. So it really depends on the size of the actual chicken thigh. Make sure the pan is hot, and that's the most important thing about cooking them. Hot pan, and then reduce the heat. Test it first of all. That's exactly what you want to hear. A little bit of salt and pepper. And then reduce the heat. So these chicken thighs have been boned out. You can check that in the supermarket or get your local butcher to do that. But skin on is so important in this. Keeps it really moist, succulent, and the crispy skin is fantastic. I use a lot of chicken thighs when I'm making a casserole at home for my twins. I wrap them in smoked bacon, cook them with some sweet potato and some red onion, a little bit of stock, and it's just delicious. They really are fantastic. And they cook relatively very quick. So what I'm gonna do next is prepare my vegetables for my lentils. So we're using some carrots, celery, and leek in this. So I'm just going to peel the carrot, just using a potato peeler, and just go the whole length ways down. Now, I'm going to dice this into a small little dice called a brumos. So about half the carrot should be loads. So slice it, be careful doing this. And this is going to be the base for the actual lentils which we're going to cook. Okay, so just put them on top of each other and then you cut them into a little strip. The proper name for this is a baton or a julienne and then we're gonna cube this. It's a small little dice. So that's half the carrot done and then we can move on to the celery. So celery sometimes is very much underused as a vegetable. It's a really, really beautiful vegetable braised in some stock and done with some white sauce and some crispy crumbs. That would be a classic way. Also, it's really nice in a soup with some blue cheese. It's really good. So dice this here. This is all gonna go into the pan. Every so often, just shake the pan. Don't turn the chicken, that's the secret of this. And just make sure that they're not sticking together. Now, perfect. I'm gonna use the white and some of the green of the leek here. And then we're gonna dice this. We use a lot of it in the restaurant. And it's hard to beat a nice leek, smoked bacon and potato soup. Now, plenty of oil in here. Bring over the board and scoop them all in. So you can hear them sizzling straight away. So the carrot, celery, and the leeks. Using just a wooden spoon, give them a little stir. So I'm just gonna turn this down and I'm just gonna let this slowly sweat the vegetables. And after about 10 minutes, I'll be turning over the chicken and I'll also be putting my lentils in and finishing off the lentil dish. So after 10 minutes, this is what the chicken should look like. Nice and golden brown. And that's how you get the nice crispy skin. Just want to give it another minute or two. 
I'm going to put a little bit of butter, which will help with the colour and also the flavour. So three little pieces of butter and then I'm just going to stir my vegetables. So they softened up, but there still has a nice little bit of crunch texture. It's what we call al dente, so there's just a little bit of a bite, which is perfect. Okay, the lentils, it's just a can of lentils, just rinse them. It's going to go in on top of the vegetables. That's why this dish is so quick. And I love lentils, I have to say I'm a big fan of lentils. Hui lentils, beluga lentils, there's lots of different lentils. These are the burnt green ones. A little bit of stock, and I'm using some chicken stock. If you want this a little bit darker and richer, you can use a beef stock, it doesn't matter. Balsamic vinegar, one of my favourite vinegars. Or you can use sherry vinegar, which works really well with this. So a good splash of this. So that's the sourness, you know, the sharpness, and then some sugar. So they're kind of like sweet and sour. We stir this through. There's lovely colour there. Flip over the chicken now. That is just super. Okay, very happy. A little bit of fresh thyme. And tarragon works well with chicken. Pick the little leaves off. And then with the stalks, we're going to put this in on top of the chicken. Just lots of flavour in the stalks of this. Stir through the thyme. We need to season it up and then just finish it with a little bit of parsley. Salt, black pepper, and then just let that come to the boil. It's going to reduce now for about two or three minutes. Chicken is nearly ready. And then we're just going to get a little bit of flat leaf parsley here. Gather it all up and then just chop it. That's the way I like to use herbs a lot when I'm cooking, is towards the end, whether it's in a sauce or a dish, something like that. Especially a soft herb like basil, parsley, tarragon. Just stir them through at the last moment. And then taste. Taste is the most important thing. If you've added too much vinegar, don't panic. You add more sugar, or if it's too sweet, you add more vinegar. So you cook it to your own taste buds. Mm. I love the sharpness of the vinegar. Delicious. So what I've created is a lovely sauce for the lentils using the stock and the vinegar. Now, we're going to just check on the chicken. And usually when it's firm to the touch, and it's really, you just check the thickest part of the thigh meat. If you want to be really, really, really careful, take one out, nick it, just cut it in half, and then you'll know if they're cooked. And of course you can do this in a large pan for lots of people. So I'm ready to serve up. You get the lentils. Lovely colour, all those vegetables. Spread that all around the plate. And then just carefully, I'm just going to use the tongs, arrange the chicken thighs. So that's one. And then your second one. Finish that with a little bit of salt, black pepper. And then just for a little bit of freshness, some of the flat leaf parsley, which I have over here. It's always lovely to garnish with some fresh herbs. And then just pick them off. There you have it, my crispy chicken thighs with balsamic lentils and root vegetables. And if you normally cook with chicken fillets at home, why not give chicken thighs a go? You won't be disappointed. In the next programme, I'll be visiting Dubai, cooking some speedy dishes and meeting the Dutch head chef of an American steakhouse which serves Irish beef. I hope you'll join me. Only the Board B Equality Mark ensures you know where your food comes from because it's independently checked at every stage.